Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm pruning some climbing roses and I thought I would show you how I go about doing that. I actually have uh, climbing roses on a flat structure. We're gonna go show you one on a trellis and then also one on a freestanding obelisk in one of my flower beds. So three really good examples, I think. Now this rose is a Zephyrin Druin. Uh, so it's a thornless type rose, which is awesome. I don't even need to have gloves for this. And it's fairly simple to do. This isn't a very established rose, so we're really going to be doing a hard cutback. It's gonna look pretty harsh. And then we're gonna start training some of the main canes today. Um, so the first thing you, well, first off, this is all you need in terms of supplies. A good pair of pruners and some wire tie. And you know, there's a lot of different kinds of this. I prefer this one. This is called soft wire tie. I like it because you can cut off exactly how much you need and it's pretty inconspicuous. This foam tie stuff is a little bit thicker so you just see it more. Um, anyway, the first thing that we're gonna do with this rose is cut away a lot of the bulk that's coming outward. Anything that I don't wanna train to our grid system, which you can see here, I've got a wire cable grid system hooked to eye screws, which I actually think I need to add another couple levels to. So I've got one here horizontally and one here, and I feel like I could use another one right in between and then right there as I get further into my training process, but you can always add those. And then there's a couple of vertical ones as well. And then eventually I'm gonna have to add some to this side too. I like it because you really can't see it very well. And the goal in the end is to have this rose covering this part of the chicken coop, uh, providing them with a little bit of shade. You can see the girls in there. We've got four hens right now and they're very happy. Anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut some of this growth coming outward and then we'll move on to the next step. So anything like this right here, I'm gonna prune this all the way down at the base and just get rid of it. This stuff here. We also wanna get rid of a lot of the foliar growth because if you keep foliar growth, that can help perpetuate any kind of diseases woo, or insects you may have dealt with last year. Also anything that's weak, see this right here. This is a weak spindly stem. I'm gonna to wanna to keep more strong stuff. Now, again, this is a young rose, so I won't have any huge canes yet, um, but that's good. It makes them a lot more, they're a lot more pliable and easy to work right now. All right, let me work on just finishing up the base here, getting this, the leaves and the weaker stems clipped away. You know what, I'm just gonna get rid of this whole thing right here. I'm liking the look of this one right here, this main cane. At this point, we're also gonna get rid of anything that looks like diseased or dead. Um, so like the end of this cane right here, if we take a look at it, it's not look looking super great and it's fairly thin as well. So I'll get rid of that. So when you're training, especially a young rose, there are two types of canes that you're really looking for. You're looking for main canes, which is what we're gonna be training today, and lateral canes. And this is a really good example of a main cane with a lateral cane, with lateral canes attached. So you can see the main cane, those originate at the bottom of the shrub, and they kind of continue up to the top. And then your lateral canes are the canes that grow off of that main cane. So you can see all of these lateral canes, and that's what produces your blooms. So depending on how you uh, train your main canes, that's kind of how you're, you'll see your blooms. And some people will train them in a kind of a fan shape. Some people will train their canes like this. They'll train them horizontally and let all their lateral canes grow upward. Um, it kind of, I think, just depends on the shape that you want in the end. But I'm gonna take these lateral canes and I'm just gonna prune them off a little bit. I might even, that looks like some nice fresh growth. Well, we'll trim them off just leaving a couple of inches here. It's a really nice looking main cane there. And in the end, as we can continue going and start tying these off, we'll probably end up cutting out some of these other stems right here. And you'll have more growth and they'll be a lot thicker the older the rose shrub is. So this is another example of a main cane right here. If you follow this one down where all of this growth is, follow it down, it originates right here. And it's not growing exactly the way I want it to, so I'm actually going to cut away a lot of these lateral branches here so that we can see what's going on. And then what I wanna do is kind of weave this back over. I might have to trim it because a lot of these are behind our grid system. But I want to encourage this one to go off this way. Should be pretty easy to do. But I wanna clean off all of these old leaves as we go. 
Oh, I love roses with no thorns. I wish all of them didn't have thorns. <laughs> Make it so much easier. I'm definitely gonna have to add more grit on this side because especially with this one right here, I want to encourage this one to keep growing this direction. In fact, I probably won't even tie it off today. I'll add more grid system and you can see, I'll probably add one here and tie this main cane off to that grid over here. Um, I wonder, I could just tie it off to the coop for now. I really don't want to encourage a lot of growth into the coop because I don't want the chickens eating on it. I want to keep it a little bit away from them. You can see how curious they are right now. They'll eat, eat all the rows if they could. So essentially, once we add our grid in here, it'll be right in this area. <laughs> Easier said than done. I need somebody on the inside to weave it back out toward me. Okay. So I can expect this one to produce upward growth and blooms like all along this stem. Okay, let's attack our next one. I did deal with a little bit of powdery mildew last year because this area, believe it or not, it grows in thick with plants to where you can't hardly see the base of this plant. And I let the rows grow way too thick. I didn't take after my pruning until too late in the season. So a lot of moisture was trapped in here. And that's kind of the benefit of coming and really making sure you've got good airflow around each one of your uh, branches that roses really need that in order to maintain their health. Boy, I really should have added a second grid system before we did this video. <laughs> I think this is good enough for now. Kind of, It kind of shows what the idea is. So this one, we're going to let it grow and kind of train it this way along this, this path. So this one will go this way, this, this one will go that way. I think what I'm gonna do, you guys, is just continue doing this. And you kind of get the flavor. I'm removing all the leaves. I'm kind of training these, the canes, the main canes, where I want them to go, um, knowing that the lateral growth will come up this way. So we'll just take a look at what this looks like when I'm all done. Well, that ended up being a little bit more of a severe prune job than I actually intended on doing in the beginning, but I found that some of the growth from the rose was coming from below the graft, which means it was um, trying to push some of the rootstock growth, which I didn't want. So I ended up with five main canes here, which is actually just fine because these will really start to thicken up now that they've got like really good airflow, really good light, they'll start to really um, get more robust and they'll produce a lot of growth. And it actually is, you're able to see a lot more of the framework and how the growth works on these roses. Um, so like this one here, I'll keep training it along this kind of length right here. And like I said, we'll add more grid system to this area. Um, and this will produce upward growth, lateral growth that produces blooms along that stem. This one I'll continue to train this way and it'll produce upward growth and blooms right here. This one, same, this one will grow, I kind of left a section right in here. This one will grow this way. So what we'll do, you can see I kind of bent the rose here. I'll continue to bend it as it gets reaches here. I'll tie it off and I'll continue to do that. Um, and then this one can produce a branch this way and I can train it around the side if I want, but I do have a weeping cherry here that uh, provides a little bit too much shade, I think for the rose to be happy. So I think it'll, I'll kind of keep all the growth on this side and I do have another one I don't know if you can see on the far end here that I still have a lot of work to do. And the Zephyrine roses get really big, like 20 feet long. Uh, so in the end, this whole side should be pretty shrouded, which will be really nice for the chickens. It'll provide them some nice shade. And then I went ahead and did an application of rose tone fertilizer. So we should be good to go for the season. So let's go ahead and attack this one. And then we'll move on to our trellis climbing rose. <laughs>
so this one's done. You can see I left more canes on this one because I had a lot more true canes to the variety that I want to keep left. And you can see I've got kind of a fan shape going. I just want to make sure to train as many vertically lower as I possibly can to get blooms as low as I can on the shrub. And then as these grow, we'll continue to uh, train them horizontally so that we have blooms up there as well. We are kind of just shooting for a, you know, as low as possible blooms to ceiling kind of a look. And I've got a clematis on this trellis right behind me. And so I've trained these branches into this trellis because I kind of want the rose and the clematis to intermix a little bit. So anyway, let's head to the vegetable garden. So this is the entrance to our vegetable garden. And you can see I've got two very out of control colette climbing roses on our trellis here. And they've been in the ground for at least three years. So they are very much more established than the last roses that we just went after because the last ones are brand new. So we're kind of just right in the beginning training phases. But here you can see the main canes. And this trellis is nice that it has some lattice in it. I was able to kind of weave the main canes in and out as it grew. Um, but I'm gonna attack this one in a very similar fashion in that I'm going to take after after all of these things that are shooting straight out first um, and that'll take a lot of the bulk off and a lot of the leaves then we will look for anything that looks broken or damaged or dead um, we'll take all of that out and then I'm gonna start cutting back growth from last year you can see how this main cane comes out through this side and all of the lateral growth from last year look at all of that it's a really good example and all of these had a ton of blooms on them the Colette rose is a gorgeous rose but boy it's got more thorns than I think any other rose variety that I have on this property does. Um, I'm also going to be training some main canes onto this fence because I would eventually like to have that covering here. I started to do it really late last year. Um, so I'll probably work on that a little bit as well. So let's take after this one and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all done. crazy how much better it looks once these are all trimmed back. Roses are one of the most resilient things you can plant in your garden. You can really cut these things back and they will flourish and thank you for it. Um, you can see more of the main canes in this more established rose coming up from the base here. Um, you can see where I've trimmed back all of last year's growth there and I trimmed a lot of the growth away. I mean you can see my pile down here. That's my pile for both of them. But all of the like weak growth, um, spindly growth that was mainly around the base of the plant, I cut all of that out uh, because I want this rose to send energy into producing a lot of blooms and a lot of growth up, up further along the rose instead of down in the bushy part of it. Um, so anyway, that is the climbing rose on the trellis. Now we'll move to the one on the obelisk. P.S. This is the first time I used these Falco's, what are they, 702s um, for these roses and they were awesome. I, not a single thorn got through and I was able just to plow through the rose bushes. So it's pretty awesome. So this is my rose on the obelisk and they're always so beautiful on these, but you can see that mine has had little to no training in its life. It's a complete wreck. I mean, I've got huge canes I need to cut out. I'm gonna probably cut a little bit of this shrubbier growth out of the interior uh, because I really wanna lighten the canopy on the inside. Uh, really, the ideal thing to do is when you very first plant a climbing rose under something like this, you wanna train it from day one. You wanna start kind of weaving the branches in and out of the different uh, levels so that you never really get it to a point where it's hard to do, which is kind of where I'm at now. So I'm going to same, thing, go after all of the exterior growth that's just kind of really wild and going away from the obelisk. I'll cut out some of this uh, weaker growth on the interior down to some main canes and then I'm going to try my best to weave what I can in and out of the different levels and then I'm going to tie off the rest of them with my uh, soft wire tie. So here we go. So this looks a lot better than it did before. And you can see that it's going to have, I mean, there's just buds from bottom to top. So we should enjoy blooms on this whole thing. And you can see that I've got this obelisk here to try to mask where the gas comes into our house. We have an AC unit right here. We all have areas like this that we're trying to put some things just to kind of like distract your eye from the infrastructure 
onto something pretty. So I think this prune job is really gonna help this rose out. And that's it for today's video, you guys. I just had to do this as part of our spring maintenance. And so I thought you guys might like to see how I attack climbing roses on all three of those kinds of structures. It really is very easy. It's just a matter of getting in there, doing it and being brave, not worrying about cutting too much because with a rose, I really don't think you can. Um, they will just spring forth. I mean, give them a little bit of heat, give them some fertilizer, um, give them a nice good prune job and they'll look beautiful for you for the rest of the season. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.